Hey, guess who got a microphone? First voiceover video. So for this video, I'm going to be showing the full process of how I finished this thing. I don't really know what to call it. A collage. Well, yeah, collage. So first, of course, we have the sketch. Having some kind of outline makes everything easier. I probably put more effort into the sketch than I originally intended to put. Do not make fun of my nails. Don't make fun of my nails. I see them. I know you do too. I did this right after having uh, surgery, so I wasn't able to have sick nails, have a sick set for this video, but you know. So the kind of pencil that I use is actually the Derwent Pastel Pencil. They're really cool. Um, I think I only have, I, I pretty much hoarded like the same six or seven uh, colors. I, I don't have that many because I think they're like 250 each because for some reason I refuse to buy the set. I don't know. I think you can get six of them for $10 as a set now but like they're like really specific like really standard uh pencils and i think they're really good if you want to use pastels but maybe you're allergic to actually holding them i know some people have aren't able to use like the pastel sticks so this is a good alternative and they're really easy to blend which is why a lot of people use them They're pretty fun to use, not gonna lie. I didn't really have that much of a thought process going into this, you know? Sometimes you just gotta draw whatever. I was kind of thinking of a, this was near Valentine's Day, so I was like, I'm gonna make a little, a nice little card. And then I ended up not making it a card. The little heart was gonna be like a like a locket you know one of those heart lockets and then i forgot to like write the other side I like to draw the other side so it just looks like a, a frame also with these pencils you can really you can mess up like a lot and you can use like a regular eraser to fix your mistakes like you're gonna see me layer a lot with these. It's easier to do uh, things like this using these kind of pencils with like construction paper and I'm just using regular construction paper that I found because using these on white paper is like not satisfying at all. And if you use like color paper, you don't have to worry about a background that much, really. This was funny of me. I, the cake and the sketch, I really thought I was gonna draw and render and color and outline an entire cake. I was kidding myself. I drew that little thing and I immediately got tired of just looking at it. So I continued with the body. Give me your, give me your opinion on this editing style. I finally got my hands on Premiere. Before I was using like VN and I think iMovie. <laughs> so my other videos are a little, they don't have that much editing. Look at me with the cake. You can see me hesitate for a second and then not do it and like continue with the other side. I got tired just looking at it. I don't know why I insisted on doing this when I think this was like a couple days after I had the surgery and I was so bored that I just started to do this. And if I turn off uh, the voiceover and I leave the volume of what I was watching going, it's like I'm drawing something. It's like I was trying to draw like a cutesy like Valentine's 
thing, but I'm watching like 2020, and then I watch the Ted Bundy movie with Zac Efron, and then I watch another 2020 episode. <laughs> I didn't really use reference for this, which is why it's so like static. Not really an interesting pose. But sometimes you just gotta do stuff to- Oh, look at me. Look at me with the cake again. I keep hesitating over the cake. I think at that point I was like, no man, this is gonna take longer than everything else. So we're done with the sketching, basically. And now I'm just gonna start coloring the face first, because that's how I know what to do. I think I use the light pink for the base. And these are really buildable, so you can really just do whatever. When you coat, if you have trouble coloring skin, just think of it like you're applying makeup to something. You got your foundation, probably a, a shade too light, you know. You got some blush. So you're gonna put it around the nose, around the cheeks, the little lips, your eyelids. breaking out the white for the inner corner it's like highlighting your inner corner highlighting your nose highlighting your chin and starting with the eyes again these are just base colors we're probably going to go over these i use that uh that yellow as a lot of a. Uh, I use that yellow as kind of a blender and i don't remember if people use like those little stumps to blend with these but whenever I try, it just wipes away, like, the thin layer. So I kind of just keep building over it with the, with the yellow. I don't know what the idea was for this. This is like, was gonna be one of those wacky waving inflatable arms waving tube man, tube men. And then I was like, that's not, that's not cute. Not that this is cute either, but I kind of just... You don't have to think too hard about what you're drawing, honestly. This looks like a car salesman that's having a Valentine's giveaway. Only selling cars shaped like hearts. I'm still outlining with the same blue as the sketch because I really- I didn't have a plan going in. And sometimes the highlights don't really shine through that much when you try to layer with these. Because I went in with such a, like a, a bright red and I'm trying to use like a- that really light pink and it's- you can see that I'm like really trying to make it pop. I went over it with white again. This looks like cosplay from Bro from BT21.
we're gonna do pink hair continuing with the pink and red theme purple fit we're gonna keep the colors cute and bright I sped this up like by I don't know four or five times and I know this video is already like literally a, the length of a movie but if I make it even faster it's just gonna look crazy like I don't think you'll be able to really see what I'm doing wow my nails are really grown out that oh they're mowing the lawn oh this is a really bad day to do this then. so I'm still using this blue to shade when you're using these pencils if you have like if you're trying to shade with like the black pencil it's gonna it's gonna look muddy if you're just turning out, if you're just starting out with these, it's probably better to learn how to shade with other colors first. it is a lot of blush and I'm gonna put highlights don't worry hell yeah little highlights little side I always struggle trying to do the like cute anime style like how anime people don't have really like pronounced noses usually and it always hold on now i'm trying to outline with this like dark green that i have it's not super dark also don't be like me when you use these pencils i sharpen them with a blade so they're all they're always a little choppy and they're, none of them are as sharp as I probably need them to be. But I was too lazy to find a sharpener. I don't think I have a... One thing about these pencils, they have like a specific width to them. Like they're a little thicker than a normal pencil. And I think they sell like a specific sharpener for them that you have to get. And they, they do not fit in regular pencil sharpeners, and it's so annoying. So all of my pencils look like that. And because they're pastel on the inside, do not drop them, because the whole thing will shatter on the inside, and every time you try to sharpen it, it's just going to fall out. I'm trying to do tiny highlights on the lips. Trying not to overwork it. Sorry if you hear a lawnmower outside. That's not me. I'm in here. I forgot people mow their lawns on Tuesdays. I think peak highlight points are nose, forehead, inner corners, chin, and right under each end of the mouth. That's always where I put my highlights and then around the face it's just gonna be dark that's usually how I how I do things when there's no like specific lighting going on
For the hands? I really went the simple route, didn't I? I didn't make the hands doing anything. Now with the locket, this is a little harder since I chose pastels to do this and I wanted to do like a anime type shading, which is like just stark. I don't know how to- I didn't- I didn't look for reference before this. I, I was really trying to ad-lib whatever I was doing. Am I shading in with- with blue? I actually don't remember half the things I did. This footage was a couple of weeks old. And I'm just now more recovered from the same surgery, but... I don't remember exactly how I went about some of this, so I'm watching the- I'm learning just as much as you are. But yeah, when you're doing anime style, always gotta have a bunch of highlights in the eye, you know? It's the same struggle of like, how much blush is too much blush? It's the same struggles that you use. It's the same struggles that you go through when doing your own makeup. God, that white color pencil is like a stump at that point. Look at it. And it broke. Horrible. Is this brown? Why am I using brown? See, there's a lot of... Why am I doing that? Coloring is both the best part and the worst part of this. It's kind of mindless, but if you don't have a plan, it, every, it just makes everything harder. I'm trying to do some lower lash shadow because I didn't like how I shaped the eye at all. See how the sketch was so much simpler and I'm overcomplicating myself? <laughs> Doesn't look bad. See, at this point I'm kind of flailing because I remember wondering what color I can shade with that's not clashing too bad. Let's see what I chose. Uh, the same blue? That's good. I remember not liking the way that this was coming out.
So I decided to make the girl in the locket have blonde hair, which I remember regretting because I don't have that many yellow shades. And I immediately thought that it looked weird. <laughs> Mostly because I don't know how to... Quick tidbit, I don't know how to draw blonde people. I think I've drawn a blonde person maybe twice in my life. And it looks strange both times that I did it. Wow, that's a lot of blush. me trying to create some dimension highlight in the hair because I really didn't know what else to do. The thing is, you, it's a work in progress. You can't be too mad during the process that it looks weird because you're going to fix it later. I was gonna try to make it look like a little locket, you know? Hard to do highlights on something this thin though, especially as I, I already have the blue outline, so I'm trying to use the white to put a highlight, and it's kind of working, but in other points, it's mixing with the blue and making it look muddy. So later, I'm probably going to have to go over it with my Posca marker white. And it'll look probably too stark, but it's supposed to be shiny. And it just looks like I'm making the yellow lighter, not really adding any dimension to it, you know? another yellow so this girl's gonna be corn yellow and I kind of feel like I made a mistake because the the outline of the locket and her hair are like a little too similar so I'm gonna use this blue to try to separate them I'm trying to not use like super dark color because I want it to be like cute throughout Honestly, the little locket was the hardest part of this. Because I was trying to not do my usual kind of shading like how I did on the other face. Also, that ear I think is too close to this girl's face. I kind of ignored 
hear that? It is 3.30. It's like the hottest time to mow your lawn. Just got back from work. You could be relaxing, but no, you're mowing your lawn. More work for yourself. My go-to when I don't like how my eyes are looking, just add more eyeliner, add more lashes. And I guess this girl's naked in here because I didn't put her wearing a shirt. There's no straps on her shoulders. Yeah, that ear's too high. Thank you. 
before I start with uh, outlining with pen, let's do a brief intermission. No, I don't have a sponsor. I do have kind of a funny story to tell. So I drew this painting a couple months ago and I was trying to see how I could use it. I tried to print it out and I put some glitter over it. I put some pearl beads that I had in the corner. I put some rhinestones and I poured resin over it that I mixed with glitter and I kept it drying in my, in my garage. Everything's all well and good. I think it looks decent. I leave it in my garage. I come back the next day. Guess who's there? Get a load of this guy. The resin is almost hard. This man is stuck. I literally, I shifted the little platform that it was drying on. His entire back legs, the tail, and both of his front, like his arms are stuck. Florida nature foils me once again. an unintentional taxidermy. I made a, f a fly trap without even thinking about it. It didn't occur to me how many lizards are, are hiding in the garage. Well, back to this. I don't have a sh the sharpener I was talking about. So if I'm doing a small face like this, it gets a little muddy. So I just break out the pen to try to make it more clear. And because I don't like using the, I don't think I have a like a, a black of the like the pastels. I think the darkest I have is like a, a Prussian blue or whatever the equivalent is. Or like that really dark uh, forest green that I was using earlier. Don't be like me. Use reference when you draw. <laughs> because then it's less problem solving for you as you go along. Just make things easier for yourself. See, at this point I'm kind of regretting doing the locket thing. Because now I have to outline all of these individual beads and highlight them individually i don't have to but like with what how it looks in my mind i'm gonna have to you know
I don't feel like drawing around the rest of the space the paper has. Like I don't feel like filling in the rest of the paper, so I'm gonna cut out what I did. I'm gonna cut it out. What scissors am I even using? I'm gonna cut around all of the shapes, not really touching anything. And I'm gonna get a paper, another construction paper that's maybe lighter than this one, maybe a pink. So I can keep going with the Valentine's vibe. If you guys are looking for a bad movie to watch, I implore you to watch, what is it called? Let me look for it. It was genuinely really bad. Hold on, let me open my phone. This first voiceover video is pretty informal because <laughs> I really don't know how to, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say. Oh, I forgot I have to watch this. The girl from Plainville. Um, was Death on the Nile good? Was that the one that was nominated for an Oscar? Or was that another movie? Let me see. We need... It was like, we need to do something. Yeah. It's called, We Need to Do Something. And I'm sorry, Sierra McCormick fans... I, uh, there it is again. You hear that? That's the Sierra McCormick fans coming for me because that shit was awful. And I'm trying to be nice. Like it's, it was genuinely like one of the worst movies I've ever seen. It's like this family that I, I guess there's a tornado and they're stuck inside of their bathroom and the whole movie takes place only in the bathroom. So it's Sarah McCormick, she's like an emo daughter, her little brother, her their mom, and then their dad. And the dad is so comically evil, and he behaves like a psychotic version of Red from that 70s show. And, it, it, like, I don't, I, I don't even know if I should tell people to watch the movie. <laughs> uh, it's pretty graphic at some, well, not super graphic, it's not that bad. There's some, if you're squeamish, I don't think you should watch it. Let me read you some of the reviews on Letterboxd. Directed by Sean King O'Grady. Is this person Irish? It's a very Irish name. Okay, it has a 2.5 on Letterboxd. Let me read the... Seeking shelter from a storm, a family finds themselves trapped in a bathroom for days with no sign of rescue and untold evils lurking just beyond the walls. Like, I don't know about this. The very first review is, The thing that needs to be done is writing a better movie. One and a half star. And the other one, It can't be that hard to break down a door. One and a half star. Yo, fuck this movie, and they didn't- they didn't put any stars, they just said fuck this movie. First of all, their bathroom was very nice. I'll, at some point, I'll put a photo of the- of the bathroom up so you can see it. It was a very nice bathroom, and I remember I saw one review that said, if- I will- I don't feel bad for people who have a bathroom that nice and that big. <laughs> and fuck these people, they deserve what they got coming to them. <laughs> And it was a really nice bathroom. All of the characters were horrible. I don't know how a lot of the dialogue got got passed. I don't know how they got greenlit at all. <laughs> um, apparently, the daughter was engaging in a uh, in witchcraft with her her emo girlfriend. And Sierra McCormick in the movie is like she has like a pink bob. And they don't tell you how long they're stuck in the in the bathroom for. 
it makes it sound like the tornado tore up their house and that there was a big tree that went through the house and is pinning the door shut. And they spend the whole movie trying to like break open the door and the dad is like, like it's not, that's solid oak, it's not gonna give. I don't think it's that hard to break down a door. I say as I've never opened, broken open a door, but. So they're trapped in this bathroom for, I don't even, they don't even let you know how long, but apparently it's over a day. And I don't know if it's because I'm from Florida that if you have an inkling that there's a storm outside, bad enough that you need to retreat to a different room, would you not bring food with you? Would you not bring like, oh, we're going to be in here a while. Let me charge my phone. Let me get like offline shit to watch. Let's bring a book or something. These people got into their bathroom with only a deck of cards, no food, no water. Only their phones with no charger. And then they're confused that they're stuck in there with nothing. So of course they have no food and they're starving over the course of the movie. And I'll be honest, I skipped some of it because it, it was so, it's so long or it feels so long because they don't fucking do anything. But the kid's like, let me look outside, whatever. And they had a kid who was like fully like 10 years old, 10 or 11 years old, behaving like he was seven. Like he was acting a little younger than he would have been the character. And he's like, let me go outside. And a snake bites him. And they're like, oh my god, a snake. Close the door. And the kid dies from a snake bite. And they just have his body inside of the, the bathroom. Like, they can't get out, so they have to keep him in there. And it's... Jesus Christ. There's I hear, like, a helicopter outside. Somebody's mowing their lawn. Always some shit going on. No, but they have the the brother's body in the bathtub. And they're like, well, he's dead. Oh, of course, it's like sad. And <laughs> literally like 10, 15 minutes later, the dad has been like really mean this whole time. Like he talks a lot of shit while they're in the bathroom. He's like making jabs at his wife about her possibly cheating on him. He brought in a thermos, which I assume had alcohol in it. And he wouldn't share it with anyone because I thought, because they thought it was water. They thought that he had brought in a thing of water. Also, for some reason, the bathroom has running water still. And even though they lead you to believe that the whole house has collapsed around them, but they have plumbing that works. But they don't use the shower because they put the little brother's body in the tub. It's like 10 minutes, 15 minutes after the brother dies that the daughter's like, it's my fault that we're stuck in here. And the mom's like, what? What are you, what are you talking about? Shut up. And she's like, no, my, me and this girl, I already forgot her name, her like emo girlfriend. No, we were, uh, we did a spell uh, against this kid at our school. And he ended up choking on his own tongue. And the dad's like, you can't choke on your own tongue. The daughter said like, oh, we were, we were messing around with witchcraft so we can hurt this kid that bullied us in school or something. And the dad like immediately believes her. He's like, oh, you and your fucking witch friend ruined, the, ruined this family. You killed your brother. The mom isn't saying anything. <laughs> Eventually, she like protects the daughter and she's like, leave her alone. Don't talk to her like that. And then like, it's another shot of them. It, they don't tell you how much time has passed. And the dad is looking down at the like the bathtub where the brother is. And he's like, no. <sighs> he's like, we got to eat him. Let's eat him. And the mom's like, what? What do you what? And as a viewer, I'm like, what is he talking about? The, I don't know how long the brother's been dead for. And they keep showing these kind of artsy-ish hallucinations that the 
that the daughter keeps having about her and this girl. And I don't remember what happens. The, the dad tries to go outside and another snake comes in. I don't know where they live. That there's so many snakes around their house. And the dad is so... I guess he ran out of alcohol in the beginning. And he's so distraught that he doesn't have anything to... He's so distraught that he doesn't have anything to like dull the pain that he goes through the bathroom uh cabinet and he finds like alcohol wipes probably for cleaning and he starts sucking on them <laughs> and then later he starts bleeding from his eyes and you think that he like went crazy and he's like i can't see his wife is like yeah you've been sucking on alcohol wipes that you found under the cabinet like what do you think was gonna happen so now the guy, the dad's blind, apparently. But I, that only lasts like a couple seconds because he can see like a couple scenes later. And the dad goes crazy and he tries to kill the mom. Oh my god. So there's a snake that comes in, right? He cut it, The snake slithers in and it bites the dad in the face. The dad's already blind, but he can feel that it's a snake. He grabs the snake by the head and he starts whipping his wife with the end of the snake and for some reason she just takes it she just stands there and i think the dad like takes the the snake's head like fangs off of his face and then he bites the snake's head off and spits it out and then starts whipping his wife with the body of the snake and then the daughter's watching all this from the other side of the bathroom and she takes this like shard of a mirror that the dad broke and stabs him in the back so now they're stuck with the body of the dad and the little brother and the mom is like getting crazier and crazier and she starts using the mirror shard to try to uh carve in between like the grout of the tiles and they show her that she finally makes it after a couple there's like a time lapse and she's able to break out of the room and she's so happy to see sunlight that her daughter's sleeping behind her she's like oh oh i'll come i'll come back i'll, I'll be right back like like not like getting her daughter up to be like let's get out of here <laughs> and then the daughter wakes up and her mom is gone and she's like, oh no, what, what, what's going on? And then she has another hallucination about this girl. And then the girl in her mind like attacks her. And then the mom crawls back into the bathroom. She's covered in blood. And her daughter's like, what is, what? Why are you covered in, what's going on out there? And the mom's like, oh no, 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 we're good. We have to stay in here. We're, we're okay. Well, let's just stay in here. And apparently the world is like over and there's like a monster out there or something that she won't tell her daughter and by extension the audience like what is out there. And she's like, we're good. We're good. We don't have, we don't have to go anywhere. And then you hear something like bang outside of the hole, like the hole in the wall, like something's about to get in and the mom and the daughter both scream and then the movie ends it's like a red screen and they're like yeah movie's over like i saw two deaths a guy bite the head off of a snake use it to whip somebody else and then he died and he died because he was half he was mad because he was sucking on alcohol wipes because he's an alcoholic and he ran out of alcohol like, I don't know. I don't know about this movie. It's a little- I think it's something to watch if you're with friends. Not something to watch if you're trying to look for a good time. It was very 2015 Tumblr, like the styling of the teenagers.
but it's bad like i haven't seen a movie that bad in a while which i think is funny let me let me find out who wrote this movie so we know who the director is okay first of all one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven people produced this i'm not kidding dude and only two of them are women This is entirely too many people watching, like, working on a movie together. Okay, wait. Okay, the the writer is this is one of the producers, Max Booth the Third. That sounds like a fake name. It was really bad. I'm sorry, Max. Actually, I'm not sorry. You put your work out in the public. You're gonna get public opinions. You guys should watch it. Anyone watching this. Oh, also, Ozzy Osbourne is in this movie. I won't tell you how, but he's in it. Anyways, back to the drawing. When using Posca's on top of these pencils, uh, once you use them, you can't blend over the Posca. Like, it's gonna essentially rip the paper. So you have to be really mindful about where you put stuff. And I put this sticker... Because I think that the, the... The pencils are so, like, thin that I want it to be... I want some parts of it to be more opaque. Like you can still see some of the paper like underneath. Especially this little hat, which I'm, I don't know. I put highlights to make it look more like latex, I guess. Dude, in the movie, the dad is like oh you did this to us because the daughter was like
I cut out a lot of me being like, where does this go? Does this look good here? Does this look good here? This doesn't look good here. And I, me ripping it off, putting it back, starting over. The problem is I cut the paper before I planned out where the stickers were gonna go. So a lot of my choices are either I'm putting it over the drawing that I just spent all this time doing, or it's like too close to the edge. And then the, I would have to cut off part of the sticker. We're almost near the end, folks. 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 -s 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 -s. Yeah, I'm using these stickers as accessory because I realized I didn't put anything else on the... I didn't do much to the hair other than color it. Yeah, I should have planned this out. Always plan, at, at least have a sketch. If you go head first into what you're doing, you're just, you're just gonna get mad quicker. these little rhinestones that I have that I actually really hate because they're the ones that they're like the, the kind of the cheap ones that they just have like a long strip of glue whenever you try to pick up a rhinestone the glue doesn't come with it because it's one strip that's like plastered onto the page so you have to cut each one individually and then you have to cut around the paste because it's never the right shape. But I like how they look and I have a lot of them so I'm gonna try to use them for this. So I used one for the button. I try to put some where there's spaces that I didn't put stickers on. If I had glitter, I probably would have used glitter for this. Putting one right in the center of the heart. And for this last part, I'm gluing it onto this other construction paper because I don't like having just this, uh, not really red, it's a very like light pink red that the original drawing was on. And see, I do everything backwards. I should have done this and then added the stickers, but you know, whatever, it's done. And there it is, all reliable. We're done, we finished. I think it looks a little cute. I use my stickers.
I'm trying to do more of this collage stuff. Here's another one that I made that I've shown on my TikTok before. Now they can be friends together. I don't know what to do with these, honestly. I don't put them up on my walls. I do have both of them as prints on my imprint. And here is how I edited the final. I really bumped up the saturation and I put like a crumpled paper overlay on top of it. So let me know if you like this video. I know it was a little long, but again, if I sped this up any more than it already is, like it would be incomprehensible what was happening. But let me know if you like the voiceover style. I could just, my other videos are only music. Let me know if you like me chiming in and every now and again even though some of it is kind of nonsense that movie ugh, dude, ugh. like I, I'm, I'm torn between whether I want people to see that movie or not I think you should see it at least once like the dialogue is so it's so like a 50 year old man wrote this you made it this far into the video good for you Thanks for sticking with me for this long. Hope to see you next time. Hope to see you around, old sport, old buckaroo. Next time we can throw a football in the front yard. How about that? I go wash up for dinner. I don't know what I'm saying. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.